and again with different types of and different seasons of discipling, you know, with me interacting with other spiritual Christians. Because here's my thoughts on discipling now. There's nothing in the scriptures that says that a strict pyramid type structure is sinful or wrong. In fact, in some instances, for a period of time for a for a specific purpose, that may be the best way to help mature people. So let's say you have someone who becomes a Christian, yet they're struggling with alcohol addiction. You can have someone, you know, be their accountability partner, help disciple them, help get their spiritual legs under their feet, especially if they had struggled with the same thing too. But the goal of that discipling relationship is for that person to stand on their own Mm -hmm. and not have you know, have the accountability, but not super duper strict accountability. Mm-hmm. Things like that. Um, Freedom of the individual versus control. Yes. Yeah. And so it takes a little bit of wisdom on the person discipling them to kind of have that, find that balance. Mm-hmm. Um, because their heart is, hey, I want to disciple Fred over here so that they not only get to know Christ better and have a more mature relationship with them, but also, you know, deal with the things that have led them to their alcohol addiction so that they can be free of that. Mm-hmm. And of course they're going to fall in some certain periods, but I just want them to be mature enough where they can handle it without someone strictly being in their lives all the time. Um, I guess another scenario that might work out with that is if you were say going to be, Um, you're called to be in the ministry full time that you would want to live and do not live with, but you want to pretty much do ministry with that person for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kind of sound like, yeah, my job isn't just to preach on Sunday, but also visit the poor and sick and do some church administrative stuff and blah, blah, blah there and kind of get some deeper insights into that. Mm-hmm. So I think a discipling relationship like that would be really helpful. Mm. Uh, maybe not, again, not required or necessary, but just some instances where the one over one for a limited period of time for a specific purpose would really help out. But in general, in general, for all Christians, um, when you become a Christian, you receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You are indwelled. You are infilled. And you need to continuously get infilled. Um, you're guided, directed, uh, convicted of sin and righteousness. The Holy Spirit has his roles and his jobs in your individual Christian life, so you stay in step of the Spirit and produce the fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. So you have that end. On the other end, you have other Christians who are doing the same thing, too, in the context of a local church, a local recognized body of believers. So that's where the accountability with one another comes in. And in that group, you have people, the spirits that decide to be official leaders, pastors, teachers, elders, people filling those type of uh, roles and responsibilities. But that's where the one another accountability really comes in. It starts with each individual Christian having their individual relationship with God and doing what the Holy Spirit says. Yeah. In the discipling systems and paradigms, not just the ICOC, but Great Commission, Reliant, Maranatha, Every Nation, those groups, you don't have that. Right. You have a human being taking over the role of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit does not have a job, mm. ultimately. So why do you need the power of the Holy Spirit? You've got your discipleship partner to tell you what to do and unfortunately control you and keep you immature. But fundamentally, when it comes down to the other groups, specifically every nation and groups like that, they are, what I share with you about discipling, it is perfectly totally applicable to these other groups as well. Mm -hmm. The specific reason why the ICOC is so dangerous is that you have the discipling paradigm on one end and you have the Church of Christ patternism doctrines on their end put together in a really, really bad mashup. Mm -hmm. Where in other groups, like I'm not totally familiar, well, with the Great Commission Reliant, their background came out of the Plymouth Brethren. I'm not super familiar with the specifics of their doctrines, Mm 